in the fifth lecture also we are not discussing directly upon present constitution we are discussing only the british rule yet we are there in the british rule and how uh, actually what provisions are today in our constitution how they were uh, developed that part we are going to discuss so here uh, i am once again telling you that in previous lecture we discussed about uh, indian council act of 1909 in that we discussed that uh, uh, it was considered as father of communal electorate that uh, montague uh, morley minto reforms so they were considered as a father of communal electorate but actually why to blame them the thing is that these are the strategies made by uh, strategy makers those who are there in government they decided this type of strategies and then according to that strategies the government is working so no doubt uh, in the movie as we are discussing that hero is doing something in that movie or heroine is doing something in that movie but practically we are aware that uh, neither hero nor heroine they are having right to do anything in that movie okay the story is written by somebody else from that the screenplay is written from that the director is there to direct them and all these things are there and ultimately it's actor's responsibility to present you whatever the given things are there that is uh, reach till you so same way the strategy makers are there to make strategy and then accordingly some hero heroine they are there they are acting out so i am revising once again that uh, after indian council act of 1909 at that time british empire was at its zenith already the war of supremacy was broke out between european countries as it was always there but now this time with modern machinery and all that because prince bismarck from prussia he proved the importance of modern machinery uh, for germany and then onwards uh, world war was there on the we can say uh, doorstep but in 1914 there was beginning of world war so it was expected since 1905 and ultimately after 9 years the incident happens and uh, finally britishers manage to get victory in this world war this is we can say with help of america that is usa at that time so with help of usa with help of uh, we can say little bit of france uh, but most important thing for war we required army and resources and both army and resources were taken from india it was india that was there to give them resources to very very great extent at that time what was indian situation do indians were really helping britishers answer is yes uh, surprisingly uh, indians were helping britishers in world war Uh, particularly what we call that father of nation that is mahatma gandhi his statement was there that uh, emperor when that emperor is in trouble it's duty of their subjects to help them then uh, many indians work on their own account for british uh, victory and finally britishers got victory now Uh, when world war was going on at that time britishers needed indian help badly and they promise that we are supposed to give you back what you are going to help us we are going to give you back uh, to the surprise during this world war lokmanya tilak the congress leader that is from extremist group he was there in jail but he came out after completion of 6 years imprisonment at mandale he is the only congress leader prominent leader of congress who suffered jail for more than 5 years at a time now uh, he was demanding 
a concept that is called as freedom wrongly translated as dominion status there is lot of difference between freedom and dominion status but here lokpana tilak was demanding freedom but in later phase it was translated as dominion status he claimed that freedom is my birth right and i am going to achieve it one lady from ireland a very intelligent lady was there she came from ireland to india and she started a movement that is called as home rule league movement and uh, lokmanya tilak also started a same movement uh, joined same movement and ultimately it was end of world war that is in 1918 world war ended with marvelous victory of britain over germany treaty of versailles was signed britain got tremendous wealth from germany and all that that is apart but the most important thing that uh, turkey that means turkestan at that time was defeated the ottoman empire was came to end and then britishers got control over arabian territories after this world war because the future was there in audi and britishers were aware of it and therefore world war proved very much useful for britishers in all respect and now they decided to give us something okay that is uh, we are calling government of india act of 1919 this is a uh, given by secretary of state named as montague and uh viceroy of india that is called as chemsford so this is called as montague chemsford reform that is a uh, government of india act of 1909 so this is the background on which this act uh, was given to india now uh, this process again keep in mind britishers whatever they were performing here no doubt they were showing us that like they are helping but under name of helping they were creating problems they were sowing seeds for next crop just as we discussed in previous lectures same way here now here uh, they divided central and provincial legislature they were a uh, provincial legislature was authorized to make laws on their own respective list of the subject now central government was considered as union uh, or uh, say that is considered as standard but certain liberties were given to provincial government means today state government central government is uh, under control of uh, direct parliament whereas a uh, state government is indirectly controlled so at that time it was called as provincial government now here some diarchy that was produced now uh, subjects were divided into two part the transferred subjects that is the first and reserved subjects like that some diarchy experiment was produced in government now so i just try to recollect our previous lecture where we discussed that whatever the innovative ideas were there uh, regarding parliament that were implemented first in india and then uh, by looking at the result they decided okay we can continue so this diarchy of government was used in india but uh, the experiment was totally having failure and so it is rejected in latter reform so in 1919 we got this diarchy government then it introduced first time the bicameralism and direct elections in the country now uh, indian legislative council that was replaced by bicameral legislature like england was having that is upper house and lower house now upper house that is called as council of state and lower house that is called as legislative assembly now today we are considering legislative assembly for state government but at that time it was considered for central government only so this was uh, again you can check previous lecture only there we had discussed that world is divided into two part greek and non greek and what is your role 
uh, your means Alexander role to conquer non Greeks and make them like Greeks. So same thing is here. Uh, now they introduce parliamentary system in India and same parliament as it was there in government. Same to same, like uh, Indian parliament, in India also they carried out the upper house and lower house concept. Upper house is called as council of state and lower house that we called as legislative assembly. Now, uh, in Viceroy's executive council, six members were there. Out of that, they decided three members must be Indian. But in that three member, Commander-in-Chief should not be Indian. So Commander-in-Chief, that is the most important post and that was not supposed to be Indian. So like that, that means Britishers were giving us some sort of liberty. But that liberty was not, we can say, 100%. Obviously, in order to protect their empire from their side, they were right. Now, it extended the principle of communal representation. Try to recollect, I have uh, told in that for previous lecture only that they wanted to divide India as much as possible. So in 1909, they given the communal award like that, uh, certain electorates were kept reserved for Muslims. Now they extended this principle and uh, they given separate electorate for Sikh, then Indian Christians, Anglo-Indians and Europeans. So the idea of separate electorate that was extended now uh, in this 1909 law. Now again keep in mind that uh, no doubt they said that uh, Sikh, but do Sikh people are really a separate religion? It's doubtful. Uh, according to some people, they say it is a sect, sect in Hindu community only. If you check a uh, Hindu code bill, I hope it will be there for few years only, uh, almost all now when uni uh, uniform civil code will be impl uh, implemented, then obviously uh, this Hindu code bill etc. is not required, but right now Hindu code bill is applicable for Sikh people also. Okay, so basically, and you check out their names, uh, what that 10 gurus of Sikhism, check out the name, they are all Hindu names only. So Dashamesh, that means the 10th Guru of Sikhism, having name as Guru Govind Singh. So Govind is another name of Lord Sri Krishna. If you check their Guru's name, many of Guru's name, say for example Guru Ramadas, Guru Arjan Dev, all these things, Guru Nanak Dev, we are calling Guru Nanak Singh, no, Guru Nanak Dev. So like that, these all things in, uh, shows that Sikh was a sect in Hinduism. But Britishers started claiming that no, it is a separate religion. That was for their benefit. It was, uh, there means Britishers' benefit, it was. Now, Indian Christians. Now, it is again thing that uh, Christianity is Indian. Answer is yes. You can refer certain books. They say that Jesus Christ was Indian. So, anything, uh, but they say that uh, Indian Christian. Then, Anglo-Indians. And lastly, pure European, that means what both mother and father are European. So for them also, a separate electorate were kept. Now, it granted franchise to limited number of people on basis of property, tax or education. So they can also contribute on basis of that. Now, it created a new office of the High Commissioner for India in London and transferred him some of the functions that were there in hands of Secretary of State. Now again go to previous lecture, we discussed this point that there was a Secretary of State who was there supposed to be in London, England and his representative that is Viceroy that is there in India. But in order to attend various functions of Secretary of State, another body was created that is called as New Office that is High Commissioner for India. Now. Uh, it provided establishment of Public Service Commission, that is in 1919, this law, 
Hence, Central Public Service Commission was set up in 1926 for recruiting civil servants. So, in previous lecture, we discussed that uh, civil services were opened for Indians, but exams were conducted in London. In 1922, first time exams were conducted in India, and now they provided a commission on this basis. It separated for first time the provincial budgets from central budgets. So, all these steps, if you are going through, observe correctly, you will see that a decentralization process they are going to extend step by step, not directly in 1909, but in 1919, decentralization was remarkable. Provincial governments, they were having their own budget now, they were allowed to make laws in their list. So, like that, the power was given. They were showing this way that power is given to Indians. But the main intention was to create a federation system. That means uh, in latter phase, we can play with Indians. Variety of destructive games. And for that purpose, they were doing that all activity. It provided for the appointment of a statutory commission to inquire into and report on its working after 10 years of its coming into force. So, what was the basic idea? What is the meaning of this uh, report and uh, commission, that is statutory commission, that they said that uh, these all reforms, whatever the impact of these reforms are there, we are going to test, we are going to get review of that thing and ultimately after 10 years, we are supposed to give you next installment or next lot of reforms. So, uh, ultimately we are going to conclude what the discussion Britishers accepted. That means uh, in Montague Chelmsford reform, they accepted that we are going to give you freedom or rather dominion status. That is step by step. So, this is the first step of uh, dominion status. <coughs> we'll check impact and then after 10 years we are giving next part like that every 10 years we will make you eligible for administration and ruling purpose. Now uh, initially they accepted the word that uh, we are uh, accepting, principally accepting to give you freedom or dominion status, whatever that, Swaraj, Purna Swaraj. Now, Lokmanya Tirat said, after getting all this uh, act, he studied out, Lokmanya Tirat was a very intelligent person, he said, this is neither uh, what we can say dominion status, nor the foundation of dominion status. And then, we have to wait for 10 years to check the impact. To the surprise, um, very unfortunate, but uh, after this act, that uh, 1919 act, uh, all of a sudden there was death of Lokman that is on 1st August 1920. Now this act was implemented, that is uh, much more later phase. Somewhere around 1921, this act was implemented. So, act was given in 1919, but it was not immediately implemented. And uh, there was a government that is from Labour Party. That government was there in England. Uh, to the surprise, when Labour Party was in beginning stage, at that time it was held by Lokman Nitra. Some of the funds required for that party that was collected by Lokman Nitra when he was there in England for some of the other work. And with that funds, Labour Party performed well. And then onwards, Labour Party got power. So they wanted that we have to give something to India back. And therefore, all of sudden surprise. But uh, actually, a commission should be assigned in 1929 for what is the next thing we have to give to India. But they assigned commission two years earlier. That means practically what we say, that 10 years gap, but 10 years gap was not there. 
So act was passed in 1919, but implemented practically in 21. Whereas uh, in 1927 only the review was taken, and then that review uh, to take that review, a commission was set up under a person that is called as Simon, uh, Sir John Simon, was the chairman of this. So this commission is called as Simon Commission. But we, uh, we means Indians at that time. They were not ready to accept this. They said that uh, none of the single person on the commission is Indian. All persons uh, on the commission, the members of commission, they were all British. And therefore, they started boycotting. Ultimately, Simon Commission came to India. They observed the situation in India. They studied out and given their suggestions. Okay, so this is first part. Now see. The complications created intentionally by these Britishers. So actually, if Montague Chemsford reforms, they were given in 1919, then we should get reforms in 1929. But they assigned this commission, but the report of commission was there for consideration. Then in 1925, another thing was carried out. Say in 1924, elections were there. And uh, Congress people, everybody was not follower of Mahatma Gandhi at that time, particularly Nehru, that is Pandit Motilal Nehru, Barrister Chittaranjan Das, N. C. Kelkar, all these people founded a party that is called as Swarajya Party. And they fought the elections and entered in the uh, council. Now, uh, Barrister Jina, he was also nationalist at that time. Not finally, but at that time he was also nationalist. And with help of all these people, that means Pandit Motilal Nehru, N.C. Kalkar, Barrister Chittaranjan Das, along with that, Barrister Jina proposed a concept that in order to solve Indian problems and in order to make a well-known Indian constitution, there must be a conference where everybody should be at equal level. That is called as round table conference. So Britishers also accepted this fantastic idea. Uh, we have to think over it. So this is the way we can neither deny nor accept it. We have to think over it. And this way they started thinking over it from 1925 onwards. And finally in 1929 they said that yes, you are right, we have to take now round table conference. And this way they conducted totally three conferences. They are called as round table conferences. Now, Britishers uh, totally organize three round table conferences. It is not that they have decided to organize three round table conferences, but the first round table conference they conducted at that time, Congress was not ready to participate in that that is Indian National Congress at that time under leadership of Mahatma Gandhi uh, because at that time they started a movement that is called a civil disobedience movement. Now, there was an agreement between Mahatma Gandhi and Lord Ayurveda that is called as Gandhi Ayurveda Pact and then uh, Congress decided to participate and in second round table conference, there was only one representative from Congress, that was Mahatma Gandhi. And he demanded their Purna Swaraj, that is total freedom. Now, uh, why the situation was something like that? Because one more step, I want to tell how the civil disobedience movement started. Because uh, it was there in civil uh, Simon Commission, 1927. Then onwards, there was a Secretary of State named as Lord Birkenhead. He said that all Indians will come together and form a, an acceptable constitution is just impossible. This question should not be answered. Or if at all we have to answer, we have to ask questions like that. All right, can all Europeans can come together on the same table? 
and form acceptable constitution that all Europeans will accept. Never possible. So today also check out EU, that is European Union. This England only not participating in EU. What about other people? So at that time they were having struggle. They played world war, wrongly called as world war. They played European, grand European war. Like in India, 5000 years ago there was Mahabharat. So similar, uh, we can say Maha Europe was there. So that type of war they played there. So these people say English and French, they are not able to come on table. In 1905, forcefully they came on table, they fought war with Germany, but after defeat of Germany, there was terrible struggle between Prime Minister uh, Lloyd George and Prime Minister Clemenceau. Clemenceau was from uh, France and Lloyd George was from England. So this was supposed to be answered that you all European people, or in fact, uh, let us talk about Great Britain, Great Inverted Power. The thing is that, Ireland wanted to get freedom from England. This is UK. No, it is forceful UK. That is Union, Union was forceful. Ireland was forcefully adjoined, uh, connected with England. Scotland was forcefully connected with England. So it is not EU, uh, sorry, not UK. It is forceful UK. So we can ask question on the basis of that. Otherwise, why that Irish lady that uh, Dr. Annie Bazin should come to India for betterment of India? Answer is no. To cut down the power of Britain, their resources should be cut down for that purpose. Now, same thing is here that uh, Lord Burkhan had challenged India that all Indians will come together and form acceptable constitution is just impossible and Congress accepted the challenge. Under leadership of Pandit, Motilal Nehru, a commission was set and their role was to make Indian constitution. This is called as Nehru report under leadership of Pandit Motilal Nehru. And then the report was presented to government but Britishers were using certain terminology as soon as possible, very early, yes Within few uh, months, like that terms were used, in order to check out this, they say that now we have presented the report and you have to implement it within a year. So time given for that purpose, that was one year of time. And Britishers didn't pay any attention to that report. It was in month of December, the session of Congress was there that is Lahore session of Congress, that is in December 29, almost year was finished. Britishers were not ready to make any action on this Nehru report. And then Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the young president, chairperson of Congress of that Lahore session, he said that we demanded only dominion status in Nehru report. That was uh, empire, British Empire will be dominant and under that empire we want our own rule. So like that system that is called as dominion status, that means in present day, present India, what a state government is having, that is called as dominion status. So that was demanded by uh, Indians, but Britishers were not ready to accept that. And now we want Purna Swaraj, that is total freedom. Now we are not satisfying with dominion status. And then Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru said that this is now month of December. So on 26th January, we are going to celebrate our Independence Day. And this way, they started celebrating Independence Day on 26th Jan 1930. That was the date for celebrating Independence Day. And henceforth, we have to consider we are free from British laws. And therefore, they started a movement that is called as Civil Disobedience Movement. Alright. So, on basis of all this thing, now Britishers decided to give us something. Out of that one was communal award given by Ramsay MacDonald. 
second uh, we rejected that and then we got act that is called as uh, the government of india act of 1935 so we are going to discuss about this government of india act 1935 in next lecture thanks